What's up, composers? As you already know, Finale Effective August 26, 2024 is being killed off in favor of Dorico. And so a lot of us are in the position of trying to figure out what we're going to do, you know, with all of the backlogs of Finale files that we have, whether we're going to try to adapt them into Dorico or whether we're going to have to start from scratch. In this video, I'm going to basically try to take one of my older Finale scores and translate it into Dorico and get it as close visually as possible to that original score. Because I feel like over time, I have sort of established my own sort of digital handwriting in Finale, and it feels very personal. And so one of the reasons that I have been sort of hesitant about using any other kind of software is because there will be a learning curve to try to execute the same sort of handwriting, or at least create my own personal version of handwriting in a new kind of software. So that's one of the biggest challenges that I have seen. I'm gonna be attempting to do that with a solo piece that I wrote for alto saxophone. And so I'm just gonna be trying to figure out a few of the initial steps to get it to a point where it looks relatively similar. This is not gonna be a full blown tutorial to show from start to finish how I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna do some essential things. I'll put chapters in the video so that you can sort of skip to the parts that are relevant to you and I'll put in the description what the things that I do are so that you can reference it later in the future if you want to remember how to do certain things. If you're new to this channel, my name is Matthew Arrien. I'm a composer and cellist. I got my PhD in music composition at Northwestern University and I'm also the founder of the Sound Painters Studio which is a virtual online community for composers who are looking to take their music to the next level under my guidance as a composition mentor. On my channel you can find courses in music theory, music composition, analysis videos, and I'm also going to be doing these Dorico tutorials because it's personally helpful for me to start to figure out the software, to start to figure out how to actually translate older scores into Dorico, how to start doing things from scratch. There are a lot of little nuances that I'm going to have to figure out over time because I use a lot of non-standard notation, like inserting kind of fingerings for woodwind players or using non-traditional note heads or different things like that that I'm just going to be trying to figure out over time. Stay tuned for those videos on music theory, music composition, these Dorico tutorials. All right, so let's jump right into this tutorial. Now, the very first thing that you need to do when you want to adapt an older Finale file into Dorico is you can't just open up the Finale file directly. You're going to have to export it first as an XML file. So the way that you do that is you open your Finale file, and then once it's open, you click on File, Export, Music, XML. And it's gonna take a minute to do that, but it's gonna export that and you can rename it. Let's say I'm gonna call this Vapors Dorico XML. Save. Takes about 10 seconds for this to work, so don't worry if it loads. Could take slightly longer depending on how old your machine is. And there you go. So after it does that sort of like visual glitch, It'll export the file. I'm going to quit Finale. I don't need to save this because I haven't made any changes. And then you right click on this XML file, which is going to go to the folder you set it to. And then I'm going to open that up with Dorico. Now, since the goal is to make it look as close to the original as possible, there are going to be a lot of things that I'm going to need to change. So I'm going to open up the PDF so you can see this. but. Basically, this was the original version that I engraved in Finale, and this is what Visual Soup Dorico has made with my XML. So it's pretty far off, right? So there are gonna be a lot of things that we need to do. The first thing that I wanna do is I wanna see the same pitches. Right now, since this is for alto sax and E flat, it's currently showing me the concert pitches, and I don't want to see the concert pitches. I wanna see the transposed notes like it is in the original score. So what I'm gonna do is you just go into edit and you scroll down to transposed pitch and then it's gonna switch. So that's the very first thing. Now there are also these little flags here like it's saying this piece is in E flat major which is obviously not the case. And so when you wanna hide these kinds of things, these are called signposts. So you wanna hide that signpost. I don't really need to see key signatures. So when you, de when you unclick the key signatures, it's gonna hide that signpost. Now, these other X's are just, when you click on them, you'll see that it gets highlighted in orange. So this text, it says, like smoke, always as seamless as possible. I don't want to delete that, right? I need that expression marking there because that's kind of like what the, what the feeling of the piece is. And so I need that in the score. Now, I don't really love the way that the page size looks currently. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to go into edit and scroll down to notations. And then you're going to want to go to staff size, custom staff size, 
And what you can do is change the scale factor to whatever you want. So I'm just gonna change it to 85 for now, just as sort of a placeholder. Now, this may not be perfect. I'm gonna go back to my reference score to make sure that I'm kind of on the right track. It's sort of ish. It's, so, it's sort of starting to get there. Now, obviously I have way too many bars on this system and I have way too many systems on this first page. Moving these things is really easy. In Dorico, all you have to do is you go into first engrave mode. Like if you're in write mode, it's not gonna work. You have to first switch to engrave mode. I'm gonna expand my window a little bit here. All you have to do is select the note that you want to move. So I'm gonna click on the first note of bar three and you just have to click on period to move it down. If you want to move it back up, you press comma. So I'm gonna try to match the number of bars that I have in the original. In the original, I have three bars. So I'm gonna find the third bar after that one, and press comma, and it moves the whole measure. So notice that I have to click on the first one and when it's highlighted in orange, that's how you know it's gonna work. The next system has one, two, three, four bars. So I find one, two, three, four bars. That one is already good. The next system is two bars. So I'm gonna move this one down with a period. And then last I have one, two, three bars. So that one is actually good. Obviously we have way too many systems here. So what you're gonna do is you need to go into the layouts window and you do that by clicking Command Shift L or Control Shift L if you're on Windows. And then you're gonna need to go into staves and systems. This is gonna be on the left side. You go into staves and systems. You're gonna scroll down to casting off. And what you can do is you can either set a fixed number of bars per, per system. Like in, you may have been wondering like why, is, why am I customizing how many numbers of measures there are in each system. In my case, it's because not all measures are the same size. If you want to make it so that every single system has a consistent number of bars, you would do it this way. I'm gonna un deselect this because I don't wanna have a consistent number of measures per system. You can also select, select fixed number of systems per frame and frame means the page. So I can change it to five if I want to, apply and close, and you'll notice that all of the extra systems are gonna disappear. Now this did it sort of inconsistently in terms of spacing and distribution. On my original, I have five systems on the first page, and so using the automatic set number of fixed systems per page may not be the best option in all cases. In my case, I'm gonna hit Command Z, so you go down to the sixth system, if you want five systems on the page, create a frame break, and there you go. Now I have my five systems on the first page. And so if I wanna just set all of the pages, then I would count the number of systems there are on each page. So I have five on the next page, so go down to the sixth one and create a frame break. And I'm just gonna leave it like this for now. I will have to adjust the number of bars per system in different situations so that I can have the four pages that my original has so that the spacing looks right. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it at this point and I can edit it further in the future. Now that you know how to move measures to, through systems and how to set the number of systems per page, either customly or setting a fixed number, you can imagine how I would continue this process and refine it further so that it looks like the original. Now, obviously there are other things that I need to insert here. So one of the most important things in this piece is the graphic that I have here for fingerings. Now. The way that I did this in Finale was I, I did this with the, the graphic designer in the expression box, but it doesn't really work the same way in Dorico. It would be really complicated if I did it in sort of the same way where I have these different individual objects that get grouped together. So what I have discovered is it's actually easier to just insert a graphic frame in Dorico. And so first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a screenshot of this specific graphic here of this first fingering. And you do that on the Mac with Control Shift 3. Um, and then that's gonna save to my desktop. And so I'm gonna now move this into my, I'm gonna rename it as fingering one, drop it into my folder here. And you, the way that you're gonna insert it into Dorico is as a frame. So again, under the engrave panel, you're gonna select the frame, and then there's this sort of like mountain with a sun symbol for graphic, and you can create your graphic by clicking and dragging a box wherever you want it. 
And then what you want to do is you double click on the box and I'm going to go to my desktop where I put that folder and I'm going to select fingering one, open, and there it goes. That's it. Then you can select the box itself and you can click and drag on the panels to change the size. Now, I want to adjust my system heights because this obviously is not going to fit where I want it to. Um, so what you need to do is, again, under engrave, you want to select the staff spacing tool, which is this sort of like arrow with opposing directions, um, you know, vertical arrows going in opposite directions. And then you can click and drag on its handle. And when it turns red, it means you've made a custom change. Blue is, I guess, the default. And now I have space to then move this, this specific fingering. So you want to click on the graphic and then you move it by clicking and dragging on one of the borders. Now obviously this is going to overlap with some of this text here. So before I move it, I need to make space by just moving like the tempo marking and all of this other stuff. So you can do that by clicking on the graphic editing and you just click and drag on the things that you want to move. I'm going to put the clicking emerges below the staff. And then this little hyphen here, which I had earlier as like an expression in a finale, I'm just going to delete it because I don't need it anymore. So that switches to write mode. In, in order to delete it, you have to go into write mode. And I don't want to stay in write mode while doing this, so I'm going to switch back to engrave. And now I can go back to my frames panel and I can move this to where I want it. And again, there's going to be like some nuanced changes. Just make sure that you don't forget what to click on so you don't get frustrated. And this is starting to sort of collide with some other information. Now all of these green boxes are also frames, so it might be easier just to delete the information that's inside of it. And then I want to put the title, so I'm going to just rename this Metasomatic Vapors, and then underneath for Brandon Quarles, because that's what it says on the original. Now in terms of the fonts, obviously this looks pretty different, so I want this to be a little smaller. And I want this to be slightly smaller as well. I'm going to make it bold and underlined. So what I did was command B, command U. Uh, you can also just use these other boxes. Like here, it would say like the style and you can change to regular italic, bold, bold, italic. It's not the same font though. So I'm going to need to change the font so I can double click on it. And I'm going to, the font in the original is Garamond. So I just, select the font in this text editing box to Garamond. And now it looks more similar. So we're on the right track. Um, here on this left frame, if you double click on it, this information project composer will appear. You just type your name there if you are the composer. And that's pretty much it for the, for the cover page. Now there's all these little details like this text that's sort of floating. This is stuff that I had inserted as expressions in the original, which sort of gets confused for uh, for Dorico. So I'm just going to move this um, to where it is in the original. And you can edit the text by double clicking. And I want this to be italic, so I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to go into the style, change it to italics. If you want to change the font, you can change the font. The original font was Times New Roman. So I can change that to Times New Roman again. Double clicking on it is gonna allow you to edit that text. Okay, so it's getting closer and closer. Now, since this is sort of, again, a finale kind of quirk, I'm actually just gonna delete this sempre here and I'm just gonna edit the sim so that it says sempre after that. And now I'm gonna delete this hyphen delete this ellipses because I don't need it anymore. I'm going to move my comma. So go back into engrave if you want to move stuff. And I'm going to put it over the bar line where I had it before. Now you see other stuff like this, like the 12 to 14 times that's appearing over this like repeat sign that I'm using to indicate that this gesture here is being repeated 12 to 14 times. So in order to insert this thing, again, in finale, I was doing this as expressions and what I have discovered in Dorico is the best way that you can do this is by using the frames tool. So I'm going to expand this and just click on text and create a frame right here and then you double click on it and the, the, the font is Maestro and in this case I'm going to type the option 
close bracket, and that's what's gonna create this like repeat sim symbol. And I'm gonna change the size to 24. And in order to see it correctly, you may have to adjust the handles on this uh, on this frame here. And then to move it, all you would have to do is just click on the box itself and, and then drag on the box to wherever you want it. And then the 12 to 14 times, I'm gonna wanna edit this so that it's, again, Times New Roman, make it bold. And this should now start to look pretty similar to my original. Now, the size of this was slightly off. It might have been a little smaller than that, so I might just adjust this so that it's slightly smaller. But again, going into engrave, frames, I can then click on it and move it. When they're kind of small, it's a little finicky to actually select it, so don't get frustrated, just, just adjust. I think, all right, that's good enough. So it's getting there, right? It's not perfect. It's not exactly like what I did in Finale. There are still little things that are missing. Um, I wanna still continue to edit this, but this has just been sort of like my first date, so to speak, with Dorico, just kind of figuring things out, making sure that I'm basically on the right track, um, basically learning how to do all of the same things. I think some things are actually easier, like inserting graphics is, I think, significantly easier. So what I would do is I would just create these graphics from scratch in Preview or Photoshop, or you can even do it in Canva, and then export that as a PNG file, and then import that via the frames graphic insert tool. That's just gonna be a lot easier than having a bunch of different isolated parts like I did in the graphics designer, um, then a floating hyphen and then all these other information. So since I had already done this in the original score, I can just easily take screenshots of these various things and insert them wherever I need to. Now, I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. I hope that some of the things that we went over in this video are gonna help make the transition from Finale to Dorico a little bit smoother. And if there are specific things that you want to learn about Dorico, let me know what they are in the comments. As always, feel free to like and subscribe so you don't miss any updates from me, and I'll see you in the next video.